this is Kelly with Soulful Creations and I am here today to do a tutorial on the newest pattern from Kim Buzz Designs. It is the Janelle bag and this bag, I'm telling you, I've said this before, but I'm telling you, nobody will believe that you made this bag. Okay, they're going to think you got this from some high-end store, some chic boutique, because it is just that fabulous. I mean, take a look at it from these luscious rolled handles, these, this fabulous flap. Okay, we have, I mean, the structure alone, it is so nice and sturdy. Okay, so when you open it up, it's functional too. It has plenty of room for all your essentials, has a zipper pocket, a slip pocket. You can dress it up with a chain strap or you can just make your own strap um, if you want. I mean, there's just, it is just a fabulous pattern. And I'm so excited to be making the tutorial for it today. So please get your pattern from Kim Buzz Designs and meet me here so that we can make this Janelle bag. Um, you're going to love it, trust me. So get ready. Let's discuss what we need to cut out for our Janelle bag. So first you're going to need to cut your main exterior uh, panel. So um, this is a piece of vinyl that I got from your vinyl source. And so I'm going to be using that for my exterior. I have, since it's a little bit thinner, I have interfaced with Deckerville Light, keeping it out of the seam allowances. So if your vinyl um, or whatever exterior fabric that you chose to use is a little uh, thinner, you may need to decide if you need to add a little extra um, interfacing um, to it. So um, if you notice, I have some markings on the back as well. So follow the pattern for, your, for marking your seam allowances, where you're going to put your purse feed if you're going to use any, where you're going to um, install the mail part to your lock, or uh, whether it's a magnetic snap or whatever you're using. Um, so get those lines. You're also going to mark the center. So I have those markings. Um, and then decide what stabilizer you're going to use. I'm using Peltex. And there are some um, markings that you have to put on the uh, stabilizer as well um, to so you know where you're going to fold it. That's what keeps the shape of the bag. So... Um, Get your st uh, stabilizer cut out and your exterior main panel cut out. Okay, so I have that. Um, also from your exterior fabric, um, this is a vinyl that, uh, the Safiano vinyl I got from um, Indo Love Creation. And um, I'm using that for my side panels. Um, you're going to also interface with Decaville Light. And then uh, also mark your seam allowances because we're going to be folding in the raw edges on these. So two side panels from your exterior fabric. Also from your exterior fabric, you're going to cut two pieces for your flap and they must be mirrored. So as you can see, they're cut um, the opposite way um, on one side, we're going to fuse a piece of Decaville Light. Uh, this is uh, also a pattern piece for this, for the interfacing. So make sure you cut that out. And this is going to go on the back of your flap. And on the front of your flap, you're going to cut out a piece of Decaville Heavy. And you're going to fuse that on as well. And um, there's a pattern piece for that. And this is option B for the flap or option two for the flap. There is a separate way, uh, option one for um, for sewing up the flap. So um, if you choose option one, you will not be fusing your interfacing on beforehand. You will be inserting it after. So choose how which option you want for your flap and um, follow the directions for that. So that are, those are your flat pieces, but you're gonna cut them out the same way. The only difference is just whether you're going to um, place the interfacing on before or after. Okay, so um, you also going to need, from your exterior fabric, you're going to need to cut uh, two 
pieces for your handles. And then there's some markings you have to put on the back. You're gonna mark your seam allowances on the long side. And I placed some double-sided tape there because we're going to fold those raw edges in. So I've done that on both pieces. So those are your handle pieces. Okay. Um, this is your slip pocket trim. Uh, mark your center, put some double-sided tape on either side for your slip pocket trim. Um, this is the uh, zipper uh, overlay. Um, and again, I've put double-sided tape on the back, um, keeping it out of that window area. Okay, and that's pretty much it as far as your uh, exterior pieces go. And then for it, for your lining, you will need to cut out your main lining piece. And it doesn't have the curves on it like the exterior piece does. So this is does not have a pattern piece. This is just measurements. So follow the measurements for your lining uh, piece. And then on the back, on the short ends, we're going to mark the seam allowances. I placed double-sided tape there because we're going to fold those raw edges in to meet the line. Um, and you also want to mark your centers for placing your side panels later, okay? Which brings me to the side panels. Cut two of those side panels from your lining. So you're going to have two side panels, just like you did for the exterior. And it, But instead of marking the seam allowance on all the sides, we're just going to do it at the top. And again, I have my double-sided tape because we're gonna fold those raw edges in. Um, I just wanna note, I'm using waterproof canvas. If you're using cotton, you will also interface these pieces with woven interfacing. Okay. You will cut two pieces for your interior zipper pocket. And then one piece for your slip pocket. Okay, and then since I'm using waterproof canvas, I've just marked my seam allowances on the long sides and I'm gonna fold those in instead of folding them right side together and sewing my seam allowances and turning it out. So I just like to do it that way um, because I feel like I just get like um, a cleaner edge when I do it this way. So if you want, you can follow the instructions in the pattern exactly how she does her slip pocket. I mean, it, you're going to get the very similar results. So I just do it this way because waterproof canvas is a little stiffer to turn out. Okay, so that's it as far as your pattern pieces go. As you can see, it's not too many pieces to cut out. That's always a good thing. So next you're going to have to get your hardware um, as far as hardware goes. Let me grab my hardware. Okay, so... You're going to need some type of lock for your flap. So I'm using this flip lock. Um, you, you can use a flip lock, turn lock, magnetic snap, whatever you choose. Um, if you're using a flip lock or a turn lock, don't get a very small one because this flap is pretty wide and substantial and you don't want your lock to look so small against that. So uh, this one is about one and a half inches wide. I would say one and a half inches or bigger um, for your flap. So uh, a, a, some type of lock for your flap. Um, optional purse feet if you like them. So you would need at least four purse feet. You will need some side connectors. Um, I'm using these that install with screws. Um, you can use bridge connectors. You can use a D-ring. Um, with um, and, and make your own connectors. You can do a hidden connector, whatever type of connector you want, but keep it at about three quarter inch, nothing too much bigger than that. Cause this bag is not super big. So you don't want a um, super large connector um, on the side. And especially if you're using a chain uh, strap like I'm using. So this is a chain strap that already has the swivel hooks attached. Um, if you're going to make your own chain strap, like in the pattern, and you just bought chain and you're going to need to add uh, swivel hooks, make sure you get the swivel hooks. Um, otherwise, you can get the chain with the swivel hooks attached and you can weave the vinyl through it if you have a wide enough length. 
and um, you can weave the vinyl through like uh, she shows you in the pattern and you can make a very nice uh, chain strap for yourself. Or you can make your strap out of your exterior material um, if you choose to do that as well. Again, I would probably keep the strap at about three quarter inch wide, um, uh, but you can certainly do a one inch strap if that's what you prefer to do. So you will need a piece of uh, zipper tape um, for your um, interior zipper pocket and um, a zipper pull. And if you choose, get you you can add a label as well. So um, she doesn't give you placement for the label, but you decide where you want your label to go. Um, there's a nice plenty of room on the back. I think that's where I'm going to put mine because you have that nice flap on the front and I don't want it to get in the way of that flap. So I'll probably be putting my label on the back of my bag. So those are your hard the hardware. Um, the only other thing is maybe uh, getting having four rivets. I'm using these nine millimeter rivets. I just need about four because I like to put a couple of rivets on my slip pocket. Um, and then also I'm going to add a couple on the back of the flap um, just for additional security. Uh, because you're going to be opening and closing the flap and I don't want the stitches to come loose over the time and um, my flap pull up in the corners. So I'm going to add a couple of rivets. So that's it on hardware. Um, just gather all your other materials and get everything cut out and let's get ready to make the Janelle bag by Kim Buzz Designs. Now I've applied my uh, contact cement all around the whole perimeter of my main lining. So now I'm ready to just fold in these raw edges. So we're gonna, I'm just going to start here on the side and I'm folding it into the line that I marked. Okay, and it should stick pretty good. Okay, so just right up to the line. And you do have a little bit of a curve right here. So just gently ease it in. You shouldn't have to snip anything. It's not that big of a curve. So I'm just going to just continue to fold the raw edge over to that line. Okay. Okay. Just like that in this way. Okay, and I'll stop just right before I get here. So when I get to this corner where the line meets here, now I'm going to bring this end up to meet this line. And then right where they meet in the corner, I'm just going to press that together, okay? Just like that. And it'll just make a little point. Make a little point just like that, okay? We're gonna trim that off later. So just continue in that fashion. And again, we'll do, I'll just start over here, right here and right where it meets in the corner. I'm just going to press that together and make that little point. And just continue around. So as you can see, this is, it's not, it's not that bad. Goes pretty fast here. And now this end, we're pushed, folding this over to the line. And then where we have this corner here, we'll meet right here in the corner. And then press that together. This 
same thing on the last corner here. Pressing it down, pressing it together. Okay. So now we have no more raw edges. And then that's what it looks like from the front. And if you want to, you can roll these edges and um, get them nice and crisp. Okay. The good thing about this cement, if you get a little bit on your vinyl, it'll just rub off once it dries. Okay. So I did get up just a tiny little bit right there. Okay. But it's off now. Okay. So now we're going to trim these little peaks off. So just get your scissors flush, right? Flush with that. And then just trim. Okay. And you should get a nice, a nice little corner right there. Let me see from the back, from the front side. Okay. So I just keep my scissors just flush with the angle and just trim. There we go. So that's pretty easy peasy. Okay. So now we're at, we're go, we're going to go ahead and install our purse feet and put our mail uh, side to our lock on. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my hole punch. And I'm just right here where we've marked where the feet go. I'm just going to punch the hole there. And there. Okay. And I'll grab my feet here, my first feet. I hope these aren't too big, but I, sometimes I just love them when they're kind of big. But we'll see. I didn't have any smaller ones. So we'll see how these look. Okay, so these didn't come with washers either. But what I do is I just put some tape over it. So we'll see. We will see how this looks. Okay, so go ahead and get your purse feet on. If you're using them, some people don't like purse feet. No problem. You don't have to use them. Okay, let's see how that looks. So when the bag is up like this, will that look goofy? I think that looks okay. Might be a little too big, but I'm going with it. I thought I had some small, I try to get get bigger ones for like bigger bags and then smaller ones for the smaller bags. But I, and I thought I had some smaller ones in gunmetal, but I did not. Of course I had every color, but gunmetal. So um, I said, well, I have to go for it because I already have this cut out. And so, and I do like purse feet, so I just went for it. Okay, so I'm just putting a piece of duct tape over these prongs. Okay. Alrighty. So that's that. Now we're going to um, in install the male portion of our lock. Okay, that I just dropped. Those things happen, okay. So, this portion of our lock will go. And it's gonna go, remember this, this part will come up like that. And so we need to put our lock here. Pay attention to, if you have one of these flip blocks, 
sometimes there is a side that's different that is meant to fold down like that. So you want to make sure you're installing it the correct way. So mine goes this way. So I'm going to take the washer that came with it. And I'm going to place it over my marking and I will mark where the prongs are going to sit and they go right on the outside there. So I'm going to mark those just like that. And I'll take my little utility knife here and I'm gonna make those little slits. Being careful, I don't wanna do too much. Okay. And then, okay, so it go, it's gonna look better like that. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my lock here. Okay. Get my lock in there. Make sure it looks straight. Very good. Okay. Then take a piece of my Peltex because you wanna make sure that it's nice and stabilized. And I'm gonna mark those on my piece of Peltex here. that over and so this is just for a little more stabilizer there than just using just the washer okay now I'll put my washer on and I'm going to fold those prongs in to the middle Make sure they're as flat as possible. And then put my piece of double-sided tape over it. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So now you have your you have your purse feed on and you have your lock. Okay, I'm back with my uh my flat pieces. Okay, I've already folded the uh, raw edges in to meet the um, this, the line that we drew for our seam allowance, just like we did on the main panel. So I didn't want to show that again, um, but I just applied the contact cement and folded my edges in and we trimmed off those uh, little uh, peaks from the corners. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention is on the... Uh, the uh, the Decaville light, there's uh, these fold lines. Um, just make sure you mark those before you um, you um, put these two pieces together and um, do your folds, okay? Because this is what keeps this makes the um, the shape of the flap, okay? So just kind of make those little creases there. Okay, and now we're going to get ready to put these together. So we're going to put them together, uh, wrong sides together, and we're going to match match up everything. Okay, if it's easier for you, you can glue this together, or you can um, just apply some double sided tape. I think just for you know, just for the fast, <laughs> I'm going to just apply some double sided tape. I'm just, I'm not putting it all the way to the edges. I'm just going to put some right here in the center here. Just where the stabilizer is. I'll just put so three strips of this half inch double sided tape here. Okay. So, and this will just help it to hold together um, because we're going to go ahead and we're going to top stitch 
these pieces together. We don't want any shifting. Okay, so again, this is my front. So I wanna make sure that the all the edges and these corners all meet up nicely. Okay, and the same thing go here. So just, you may need to just adjust it. So I'm just focusing on these corners first. I'll add some clips to hold that. And I'll get this corner. So I'm gonna focus on the corners first because if those corners aren't looking good, it's going to look not so great, okay? Got a corner there, like that. So that's why it's important that you mark those seam allowances accurately so that these pieces come together um, and they look and they match up nicely. Okay, so that's what it's looking like from the front, the back looks good. I can see my creases. So um, actually I should have creased it the other way, sorry, because this is the back, so, but I can still see the lines but where we're going to crease it. Okay, we're gonna crease it like that, and like that, okay, just get, okay. So I creased it the wrong, in the wrong direction, okay. Because remember, this is, that was the back, so I should have folded it the other way. Okay, so that's okay. I'll get it all straight there. So you'll see, once it's all together, I'll, when I get it all creased up, and I'll fold it, but it just, it'll work better once I get it sewn together. So now I'm gonna top stitch all around. Okay, so I'm gonna use a stitch length of five. I'm gonna, I'm not going to top stitch across the short part here at the straight part at the top because we're going to top stitch that when we add it to uh, the main line, the main exterior. So just leave this part. We're just going to go around these three sides, okay? One eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna start right up here in the corner. So first, and I'm gonna leave some long tail some here so I can tie them off to the back so you don't have to see any top stitch, I mean, any back stitching. Okay. And like I said, we're gonna just top stitch, take our time and go all around. Corner. You might have to take an extra stitch there. There you go. And if you're using contrasting thread like I am, whew, just hold your breath. Go slow. All right, so when you get to this end, just we're going to drop our needle down right in the corner. And just move this over just a little and don't back stitch. And here we go. Alrighty. Alright. The backs.
stitches look good. The front stitches look good. I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pull that, pull those stitches right between these layers. Just like that. So I'm just going right in between here and I'm pulling it up through there. Just like that. And I'm just going to tie these off. So you don't, you won't have any not any back stitching. Same thing over here. So that will just be hidden inside the flap. Put a little dab of glue if you want, or you can just burn it. Just be very careful that you don't burn your vinyl, okay? So, here, and now we have, we're getting our shape, getting our shape there. My vinyl is a bit thick, it's a little thicker. So my crease might not be like super defined, but it doesn't matter. It's going to look good once it's on the bag. Okay, so there we have, we have our flap. Okay, now we're ready to add it to our main exterior. So let's bring that back. Okay, and it's going to go on the back. So here you want to mark your center uh, here. So... I'm just going to measure here because it's too thick to kind of fold and mark. So I see what my measurement is there. And I'm just going to mark my center. So that's going to be like, it's going to be about right there. Yeah, so that's about the center. And if I do try to fold it and see, You'll see that I'm pretty accurate like this. So that's the center. And then I have my center line here that I see. So um, you can fold that as well. Get your center mark. Just crease it at just a tad bit right there. Mark my center there. Okay. Now I'm going to just take a piece of quarter inch double sided tape and on the back, remember your, no, your, remember your front or your back. So I'm going to just put a piece and I'm not going all the way up to the edge because I don't want to have to, I'm going to keep it out of that one eighth inch because I don't want to sew through this double sided tape. Okay. And we're going to mark. We're going to we're going to place this one and a half inches. So right where this fold should be, about right where that fold that you made. So about that should be about one and a half inches here. Um, I'm going to make a mark there so I know about one and a half. Remove the backing off my double-sided tape. Match up my centers. Okay, so my center right there. And we're just going to place it right on that line. Matching up the centers. Okay. And then see that goes right along with that fold we made right there okay so that's where we want to be i just like to double check and make sure that the sides are pretty equal 
So that's about two inches. See, and that's not. So it's just about one eighth of an inch off. So let me just move it over. Okay, let me keep my tape there. So let me, it should be about two and one eighth inch. So let me place on each side. That's about where mine is. So I just want to make sure. Okay, and let me check again. So yeah, so now that's better. That's better. Pretty. It's important to try to have it as even as possible. Okay, so there we have it. Now we're going to stitch. So we're going to stitch one eighth of an inch across here. And then we're going to do another stitch that's about a quarter inch, three eighths from that first line of stitching. Okay. So again, I'm going to leave some long tails so I don't see any back stitching. Make sure this is at the line here. And right where I left off, so right in that spot where I left off, I'm going to put drop my needle there so it all lines up. Get in there. There we go. Okay. And go on across. and drop it right down where we started there. Okay, now we can turn it and go down a few stitches and then go back across if we want, but I do, I wanna keep my stitches as even as possible. So I don't, I don't wanna go back over some of my other stitches. So I'm just gonna cut it here. And now I'm gonna do another row of stitching. Like I said, one quarter inch or three eighths um, away from that first row of stitches. I'm trying to drop it right into the stitch line. Okay. So now I'm going to go back across this way. So you have your two rows of stitching. <coughs> Yikes. <coughs> I have to cut that out. Now we're gonna pull those stitches to the back and tie them off. just tugging on the back thread and it will pull up a loop and then I just pull on that loop to bring the thread to the back okay so now I'm just going to tie all these off together
Mm -hmm. And just put in those pins a little so they don't come loose over time. Okay. All righty. So now we have our flap attached. Okay. And this is what I was saying. I'm going to. I'm going to place a rivet right here on each side, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do that, and then we'll go ahead and start getting our side panels, our exterior side panels ready. Now I'm back with my side, exterior side panels. Um, you should have those and you should have your connectors, whatever connectors you're choosing to do. Um, I have already folded in the uh, raw edges, just like we did for the uh, other pieces that we did. So I applied my contact cement and folded in and then trimmed these corners, those little uh, peaks off the corners here. Um, I've done that on all sides in the bottom as well. On your pattern piece, you should have marked the placement for your connector and I've done that as well. So um, now I'll, I just need to go ahead and uh, go ahead and get my connectors installed. So I'm going to do that. So I'll unscrew here. Okay. Just like that, and it get, and then I'm going to use this piece to mark where the other hole goes. So I'm going to place this over the first mark. Okay, make sure it's pretty straight there. And I'll mark the other. Okay, and do the same thing with this one. So now I know where the holes go. Don't want to lose those screws. Okay. Now I'll take this side. And I also like to put a piece of stabilizer on the backs. So, just taking a piece of Peltex and I will also mark the hole placements on that as well. I will punch the holes in my stabilizer. And in my side. And scorching it up a little. <clears throat> All right. Alrighty. So now I know where to place my connector. And I'll go ahead and get those placed. So what I like to do first is well, these the screws are still in this one so i will just 
got one buzz anyway. So I usually just start with one. So I like to first place this onto my state my Peltex and then push it through from the back like that. So get the first the first screw in. Make sure it's in good. Okay. And then I put this over it, get it in place. So I usually hold it with my screwdriver here. So I hold it like this and then I get it in place. And I'll just screw. I don't want to tighten it just yet, not completely. <clears throat> okay. Well, I didn't tighten it at all. <laughs> Ooh, let's try that one more time. Eh, that's so close. Believe me, things always look a little bit easier when you're not on camera. Then the camera likes to mock you. Okay, so now I got that one in, but not completely tightened because I still want this to be able to move a little in, in order to get the second screw in. Okay, so I'm going to get the other screw pushed through. And once I get that pushed through, then I will move this in place. And I should be able to screw that one in now. Okay, now I can tighten them both up. And you can add a little dab of glue, a little Loctite glue if you want to make sure that the screws don't come loose. Okay, so there we have it. So now we have our connector on. So I'll go ahead and get the second one on, and then I'm gonna cover that up with a little du um, duct tape, and then we will go ahead and add the side connectors to our main exterior, okay? And then we're, we're getting close to finishing our exterior, and then we'll be onto the lining, putting everything together. This bag really does not take a long time. It does not. So that's a good thing. I'm just making it look like it takes a long time. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. I'll be back.
I'm back after installing both connectors onto my side panels. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to sew these darts in or these notches. Okay, so we're going to bring them together here, lining up the bottoms, the, the folded edges, make sure that they're level. And we're going to sew that at a quarter inch seam allowance. So we're going to sew right across here to close up that dart there at a quarter inch seam allowance. And we're going to do that on both side panels. So just pinch it together, lining up those raw edges and keeping those, keeping the folded edges level and even. Okay, and then you'll end up with that. And okay, so do that both them clipped and now we'll sew. Making sure it stay. So a quarter inch. Make sure you back stitch beginning and end. done and I'll do the other Her needs a little ends a little bit. All right, and now she says to trim this down to one eighth of an inch. So I kind of trim it at a little angle here um, towards the uh, back just to get that. I'm gonna trim that down just a little. Please don't cut your stitches. Do not cut your stitches, please, please, please. Okay, so we trim that down. Okay, so now we have our side panels. Let's mark the uh, center at the bottom. Okay, so use something that can be removed. I'm just gonna use a little chalk to mark the center so we know where to place it on our exterior panel. We'll do the same thing on this one. Just marking those centers. Now we can grab our exterior back, our main exterior back. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to mark our centers here. 
mark it here. <coughs> Excuse me. So marking, just marking the center points. marking right inside here okay. all right okay so excuse me if you hear some ringing <laughs> okay so now we're going to start at that those center marks and we're going to attach our side panels so the right side of our side panel should be facing out. And you should be looking at the back side of your, your main exterior. So let me just move this one out the way. And we're going to clip those together right at the center mark. Okay. So just like that. Clip it together. So I like to start at the center. Okay. I know you can also start at the top here, but I just like to make sure it's centered first. So I like to do it this way. Then I go up here, make sure these corners match up. Okay. So right here, match up those corners. Then I come around to this side and I'm going to match up these corners right at the top edge here, okay? And now it should look like this, okay? Now we're just gonna go ahead and clip in. We're gonna clip in the rest. So, you can decide how you wanna deal with those darts. If you want the darts, if you wanna open them up, and spread them apart a little and then clip it you can do that or you could try to move it to one side i just open it up a little i open it up and then i just place a clip there to hold it okay and everything else should just match up really nice so keep those edges nice and even and we're just going to clip it around. Okay. Same thing over here. Okay, so I just open up. I'm opening up that dart a little bit. Okay. Since we trimmed it down, it's not a whole lot. So, just, you don't have to open it a lot, okay? And just get a clip on there to hold it down. And then just continue to clip it, clipping your side panel on. So once you get your side panel on, oh, that looks nice, doesn't it? Okay, now we're just going to sew with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Now, here's the thing. You can try sewing it from the outside, and you can do that fine if you have a cylinder on the shoe. You shouldn't have any problem. But for those, those of us using a domestic or flatbed machine, um, it's gonna be difficult doing it that way. So I do sew it from the inside. So just make sure you're bobbing straight and um, it should be okay. Your stitches should look fine from both sides. Um, so no matter which way you sew it, you still want your stitches to be fine on both sides. So I'm gonna just start here at the top. I'm not going to back stitch. I'm going to pull those uh, stitches to the back um, and I am going to go ahead and do my one eighth of an inch top stitching all the way out. Okay, so I'm gonna increase my stitch length to back to a five. And since there's no stabilizer, it should be easy to 
get your bag flat and underneath your needle here. So I'm going to start right up at that corner. I'm going to keep this thread a little longer here. Okay. Get right up in that corner. Just like that. Making sure keeping everything even. I like to use my stiletto for that. And I'm going to start stitching. And hoping and praying that my bobbin is okay. <laughs> okay, we'll just have faith. Okay. And what I will do is, I do like to check and make sure. Because I'd rather stop now and fix it than to go all the way and get to the end and say, oh my gosh, it just didn't look good. Okay, so... I do do a little sneaky peek. And if it looks good, I go, yes. All right, keep going, keep going. You got this. Okay, so I'm gonna keep, keep it moving, okay? And we're getting gonna get close to this curve. So I'm just taking my time. Okay, when I start to get to this curve, I start to push everything up and under. Okay, so it's out of the way and everything stays flat underneath here, okay? And then remember, we have this little dart we're dealing with. So I use my stiletto to keep, to push it under and keep it out, keep it out of the way, okay? I don't want those little dart sticking out between the layers, okay? All right, so right at that dart I stop. I'm going to keep turning and just making sure everything's flat underneath. And I'm going around, hoping everything's looking acceptable. Yell out if it's not. I'm getting over to the other dart. And again, I'm just gonna tuck it in. Make sure it's not poking out. And just so right over there. All right, I'm not looking too bad there, okay? And just keep everything nice and flat. Okay. Now, ready, getting ready to come up the other side. And when I get up to that corner, I'm going to get one stitch in that corner and I'll leave the long tails out and we're going to pull it through. All right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You see, that looks right nice. Now look at that. And I'm very happy with my stitching on the on the other side. Okay, so now, like I said, I'm gonna go here, right here, and I'm gonna pull the stitches right through there. Through to this side, right in the middle here. Okay, where is this one? Here we go. Is that the 
Gotta make sure you're pulling the right stitch there because you could be pulling the wrong one. There we go. Don't pull the wrong stitch. Okay, now we can tie. We can tie that right off. Nice and tight there. Okay. And we trim that. All right. And I'll do the same thing over here. So I'm just pulling. Make sure I'm pulling the right stitch. Here we go. So pull that one and get that one. Now we're just going to do the same thing with the other side panel. And the exterior is pretty much ready now after that. See how fast it's coming together. And I know the flap seems like, oh, that's a heavy flap. But no, remember, we don't have the interior and we don't have the stabilizer on yet. So that's going to, it's going to really come together when you do that. So I'll be back. I'm going to go ahead and put the other side panel on and then we'll start doing the lining. want y'all to take a look at our exterior it's looking so good we have both side panels on everything's looking nice i went ahead and i added a label here so it's like i centered it one inch down about one inch down from the uh, edge of my flap and i kind of like it here so um you decide where you want yours to go if you're going to be using one okay so the next thing we're going to do before we start our lining is we're going to do the handles and i did not tell you about the tubing in the um when i went over the materials so these are rolled handles so you do need some tubing now um this tubing i got from the hardware store and it is it has an inner diameter of 5 16 and an outer diameter of 7 16 which is about so look for the outer diameter is about 10 millimeters um so I just got this whole roll um, and so we you need two pieces of tubing for your handle. So, so sorry. Um, I'll make sure I put a little oopsie um, in the video so you don't um, forget. OK, so we have our two handle pieces cut from my exterior. And remember, we marked our seam allowances on the long side. I put some double sided tape. And we're just going to fold those raw edges in to meet the line. So it's about uh, one quarter of an inch. Okay, so we're going to do that on both of these, <clears throat> these sides here. So, uh, okay. And we'll do the other side. I really like this vinyl from Indo Love Creation. I, I just recently went to her shop. It's in Rancho Cucamonga. California and it's about it was about an hour and a half drive hour 20 minutes from my house but it was so worth it she's the, Karina the owner she's so sweet um and she has some good stuff so if you're ever in that part of California San Bernardino uh, go to Indo Love Creation okay so um 
we're going to, so now that we have those raw edges uh, folded in, we're going to fold it again, meeting the, <clears throat> meeting these long, the long sides together. So we're going to um, go ahead and do that and mark one inch from each end. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and make a mark here, one inch from each short end because that's our start and stop point. So I just made a mark at one inch here. We're not going to sew that part. We're just gonna sew in the middle when we sew this up. So we're just, like we do a strap here, okay? So we're just going to go ahead and meet up these sides here. And we're going to top stitch at one eighth of an inch. Clipping this all together, hold it on, and um, <clears throat> I'm going to sew that down. So starting at that one inch mark, and again, I like to leave those tails so I can tie them off. Whenever I can do that, I like to do that. Okay, so dropping my needle down, and I'm going to start. And I'm going to stop <clears throat> when I get to the other mark. Stopping right there. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the other piece like that. And then I'll show you. I'll come back and show you how to put the tubing inside. So now you should have both of your handles ready to insert your tubing. So just grab a piece of your tubing and it should slide in pretty easily. So just go ahead and just push it, slide it all the way through. And it should fit. So the ends should be right at that one inch mark on both sides. Okay. So there's one. And then I just like to follow the cur natural curve of the tube too. So this will go on the um, bottom part with the seam. And the curve should go on the top. So that way my handle shape is already in place there. So I just push it in, put it all the way in. All right. So tube number two. Okay. So now we can just set these aside for later. Okay. So tubes, uh, handles done. <laughs> so now we're ready for our lining. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my main lining. So get your main lining piece and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to start with my zipper pocket. So have your overlay. So your two zipper pocket pieces your overlay, your main lining piece, your zipper, your zipper and your zipper pull, okay? So remember we marked out the seam allowance at the top and bottom of our lining. 
and I have the double-sided tape here. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove the backing off my double-sided tape, and I'm gonna fold the raw edges in to meet that line. And I'll do that on the other side as well. Okay, so now I'm going to fold this the long way to just get a center here. And I just give it a little crease here to mark the center. I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm going to place my overlay. I'm going to place my overlay one and a half inches from the fold, from that top fold. Okay. And. Oh, well, let me get a little, little uh, crease in here too, so I know where the center is of my overlay. Okay, that should go right about there. There we go. Press that down. Okay, and then remove the tape, the backing on this side. Sometimes I like to make sure the window's nice and even. So I do like this here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we have the overlay on one side of our lining. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to top stitch around the uh, outer perimeter of my um, overlay. So we're just gonna go around, top stitch around the outside of our overlay. So move this. And what are we doing? We're leaving the long tails again. So we're gonna tie it to the back. And I also have a video on zipper pocket or overlay. You want to watch that. But I normally don't show my show this again, but this is pretty quick. So I'm going to just go ahead and just sew this part. Okay, so we're just going right around one eighth of an inch. Okay, I'm gonna pull this tail to the back and I'm going to go around and stop where I started. So if you're having a hard time following me right now on this, technique, you can watch my video on zipper pocket with overlay, where I go a lot slower. Okay, so now I'm going to pull these to the back and tie it off. Okay. 
So now we have that. We're going to cut the fabric away from the window here. To, uh, so I just put a little snip there and I'm just going to cut, get my scissors under that window. Do not cut your overlay. This other side here. And I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna cut, get my scissors right underneath there and just carefully cut away this fabric from the zipper window. And this does not have to be pretty because nobody will ever see it. Unless they took the bag apart. I mean, why would they do that? Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna get across here. This is why we kept that double-sided tape away from that window. So we could cut that away. Okay. So and this is what it should look like from the front. So now we can set this aside and go ahead and sew up our zipper. So attach our zipper to our zipper pocket pieces. So I cut this a little long. We don't need it that long, but oh well. I'll just go ahead and I'm placing the zipper right, si right side up on top of the zipper pocket piece, which is also right side up. And I'm going to sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. So if you need to clip it on, go ahead. I'm going to just go ahead and sew. And we can back stitch here and just keep the zipper lined up with the top of the zipper pocket piece. And what I like to do is I like to push my seam allowance down toward the pocket piece here. And I like to top stitch. I like to top stitch. So I flip this over and I will top stitch the lining down because I don't want to risk that my lining will get in the way of my zipper later. So I'm just doing a little top stitch. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to. But I like the way it looks inside the pocket as well. So we have that top stitch. Now flip this back over again, right side of the zipper up right side side of your zipper pocket piece up we're going to line up the sides and then also the top edge of the zipper with the uh, zipper pocket piece okay and i will clip this one to hold it in place so make sure everything stays lined up and again i'm going to sew the zipper on the quarter inch Okay, and now flip that open. Again, I'm gonna move my seam allowance down towards the pocket and I'm going to top stitch. Place my bobbin. You hear it. Okay. So now you should have your zipper pocket, right sides of the zipper pocket, back side of the zipper, 
wrong sides of the zipper pocket, right side of the zipper. So we're gonna place some double-sided tape here right onto the top edge of the zipper on both sides, okay? And you don't have to go all the way to the edge. Matter of fact, I prefer not to because we're gonna sew the sides up and I don't want the double-sided tape in the way. These, this tape is just so that when we get ready to place it in the zipper window, we're holding it in place with the double-sided tape. Okay, and now don't forget to put your zipper pull on. So we're gonna take the zipper pull, open up the zipper on one end, and we're going to feed our zipper onto our zipper pull, making sure it's nice and even on the ends. Okay. Now, if you like your zipper to close from right to left, have it oriented that way. And we're going to place our window right over the zipper, making sure everything is even and centered in the window and that your zipper pocket is also centered well. It should be the same amount on both sides, okay? So I'm just making sure it's the zipper is centered in the window here and I'll just lift up one side and I'll remove the backing from my double-sided tape and I will secure that side Pressing it down. Okay. And then I'll lift this side and we'll do the same thing. Okay. There we go. And once you think that looks nice enough, which I think it so looks good, now we're going to, to top stitch around the window the zipper window. Your pocket should be open, okay? And we'll give it a go. Maybe I better check that bobbin though before we do that because if it's not enough, see, I was cutting it close. Let's get rid of that one and let's grab another bobbin. You can hear when you didn't get used to your machine, you hear that rattling that you know your bobbin is not full. That's what I listen for. Okay. All right. So here we go. Sewing the round the window, one eighth of an inch. Leave those tails long. And let's get to go. Yeah. Move your zipper pull out the way. And go about one eighth of an inch past that window and we'll pivot and turn and go across the zipper and let's see here. I like to see a little. There we go. Come this side. Move the zipper pull out the way again. I'll grab the tail and pull it to the back. And I'm going to go around and stop where I started. Right in that same hole where I started. Alrighty. Here we go. I'm gonna pull this tail to the back. Get the rag going. There we go. 
pretty. And now I'm going to tie these off. So now we can fold this top part of the zipper, pock it down, okay? And you see that there is some excess underneath that we just need to trim off. I'll just go ahead and trim that off. Now we can sew our pocket closed along the sides and the bottom. So just flip it over. To the right side I need to loosen that a little okay all right and we'll pull this side back and we're just going to go ahead and close this up back stitch Then flip that up out the way, sew across the bottom. And then turn and then flip the side out of the way again. And then we'll sew up this side. We have our pocket piece, our po zipper pocket all done. It's nice and neat on the inside. So now we're ready to do our slip pocket on the other side. So grab your slip pocket piece and your slip pocket trim. have our slip pocket trim and our slip pocket piece so like I said if you're doing it according to the pattern you're going to so this is the these are the longer sides and this is the shorter side okay take the short ends place them together right sides together and you're going to sew the sides down okay and then trim it and then turn it right side out okay that's how the, it is in the pattern I'm going to do it a little different. I have marked my seam allowances. I've added some double-sided tape. And I'm just going to fold the seam allowances in. So I'm going to fold the raw edge in to the line. So this is like the same effect as if you were sewing it. Um, but this way you don't have to turn it out waterproof canvas it doesn't like to be turned out too much okay especially on small pieces like this so i'm just finding this works better and like i said you could do do this method with if you're using cotton as well okay. just make sure you interface your cotton okay. Ready? So once you have the raw edges folded in, then you can fold this up. Okay, the raw edges need to meet and just line up the sides. Make sure everything lines up neat. And I just put a couple of clips here on the sides. Make sure they're all lined up and they match up. If it's not matching up well, just go ahead and adjust it. With the You have the double-sided tape there, you can just adjust it. Okay, so once I have that, I'm going to just top stitch this raw edge closed. Okay, and it's not a biggie because we're gonna put the trim on. So 
You won't see this stitch, so it doesn't have to be super straight or perfect, okay? It's just a holding, holding it in place. Okay. Now we have our slip pocket trim. I've marked the center line. I have double-sided tape on both ends. This is done a little bit differently than the pattern too. I just find this method, this, this works okay for me. So I like doing it this way. So just peel the double-sided tape off one side and then we're going to center this and leave a little gap. Don't put it all the way up to the line. Leave a little room because we're gonna fold the top down and it allows a little gap there to, so that um, it doesn't push it out and um, it meets up with the other side better, okay? And now we're just going to fold it over. I like to fold the ends down first to meet them up and then just fold, fold this down, okay? If you don't like the raw edge, you can edge paint, or if you, I think if you do it the way she does it in the pattern, then you won't have that raw edge. So the choice is yours. I love choices in bag making. Okay. Now we're just going to top stitch one eighth of an inch from this edge, from the uh, raw edge in my case. remove these clips okay. and we've top stitch there's a little bit of extra on the end I just run my scissors just right up the side and just trim I'm just trimming that off and again if you don't like seeing that raw edge exposed you can put some edge paint on those ends I'm just going to make sure I just burn these threads a little so they don't unravel later since I just trimmed that. Okay, so now I slip pocket. You can already tell it looks very neat. Okay, so now we're going to again find our center at the other end. I just fold this in half and make a little crease. Okay. And we're going to go one and a half inches from the fold. Okay. And I'll do the same thing with my pocket here. I'm gonna fold it in half to mark the center. Give it a little crease there. Okay. and I will get that in place. That looks good. And what I like to do is fold up the edge here and place the clip. Okay, I shifted it a little so like, oh, that's okay. And I'll do the same thing over here and put a clip there to hold it to hold it in place, okay? Okay, so now we're going to top stitch from one side down the, around the bottom and back up the other side. One eighth of an inch, okay? So I hold it down, remove my clip and then get it in place here. And I do back stitch pretty good at the top. Come down to the bottom. Okay. And around the bottom here. Keep 
keeping everything lined up, matched up good. Okay, and then back up the other side. And we'll come back up this side here, back stitch. Okay, now slip pockets on. We're getting to the end here with our lining. We'll trim these threads. I'll let you see. So we have our slip pocket. I'm going to put a rivet in each corner for a little extra stability and security there. Then we'll be ready to come put our side panels on our lining. Okay, so I have placed the rivets in my slip pocket and I've also added a little uh Peltex on the back as well. So that's a pretty secure slip pocket. So now we're going to get ready to prep our side panels. So you should have your lining side panels. Um, we've marked our seam allowance uh, at the top and placed some double-sided tape. We're going to fold that raw edges down to the line on both of those. So just like that. And like this. Okay. So now we are going to right size together, bring these ends together. So right there you have this Let's look at it like a V. We're going to fold the right edges together, meeting all the raw edges on both sides. And we're going to sew that. So we're gonna sew right across here, right across. So if you ever done a dart, one quarter inch, okay? And we're gonna do that on both of these darts and do it again on the other side panel. So we're making the darts just like we did on the exterior. Okay, one quarter inch. Okay. My husband loves to cook a lot when I'm doing a video. Maybe he thinks I'll be hungry after. <laughs> okay. okay, so we did that. We have so we have our darts sewn in. We'll do the do the same thing for this one. we do is we can bring those notches together this way meet them up so that we can mark the center so we should have the centers of our side pocket lining there okay because we're getting ready to attach it to our main lining You're getting excited. You're getting excited. You should be able to see your Janelle bag coming together now. Okay, so let's get ready to attach these side pieces. So we're doing it different than the exterior. We're not going to have the right side facing out. Flip it over this way. 
so it looks like this okay so you want the right size out so push those darts that way okay just like that and we are going to match up the center with the center of our lining Okay, we'll put a clip in there. So we're matching it up. Okay. And I like to fold to just push my darts, both pieces over to one side. I usually just go to the outer side. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. So first let's line up the top. So both are folded edges and we're just going to line it up so that they match and just clip. Okay. And we'll do the same thing over here. Okay, so match up those folded edges. Clip. Okay, now I'm going to, like I said, I'll push my dart over to one side. Doesn't matter what side you choose, but just be consistent. Or you can open them up if you want. Okay. And we're just clipping. You see everything goes together so well. And we'll do the same thing over here. So I'm just pushing my dart out towards the outside. Okay. And we'll just clip everything. Lining up all the raw edges. And it should look like that. So now we're going to sew all around um, the side pocket panel, half an inch seam allowance. Okay, so you notice this seam allowance is bigger than the one we did on the exterior. We, we just basically top stitched the exterior. Okay, so now we're doing, we're actually sewing this together, half an inch. Okay, start at the top, back stitch. Okay. And if your machine does not have the measure the you know the uh, lines um for you to follow the guides then you can also draw your um seam allowance on so that you stay consistent and so i'm just going around it's just like sewing a gusset Everything nice and even. Okay. All right, that was not painful at all. Okay. So we have that side on, looks good. And we'll do the same thing to attach this side. The same exact thing. So I will go ahead and I'll get this side on. Then guess what? It's time to put it all together. Yes, ma'am, we are to that point. So go ahead and get your other side panel on and meet me back here. Okay, look at the lining. It's all done, isn't it? it the lining is just cute on its own, isn't it? Okay, so now we're ready to insert this into our exterior. Okay, remember, so the zipper pocket is usually considered the back, right? 
So if that's how you want it, make sure you put it into your bag the correct way. So here, let's grab our exterior. Okay. And remember, so I'm putting the zipper pocket to the back. And we're just going to drop it right in there. Ah! It's so cute. Oh, my God. It's just the cutest thing in the world. Okay. So let's get it all in there good. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew our sides first. So just, just this part. We're going to sew across here. Do not sew the front and do not sew the back. So let's match everything up first. And make sure it's er everything's in there good. And everything matches up before we sew anything together. So I'm just opening up the seam here and matching it up. I'll put a clip there. Okay, and do the same thing over here. Okay. And I'm gonna match that up. here. Oh. Ooh, my husband thinks something is funny. <laughs> he thinks something is so funny that he's just willing to risk making all that noise during my video. He says, honey, just let me know when you're recording so I can be quiet. We can be quiet. You hear Jazzy, she's like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> she's like, my daddy. Okay. <laughs> it's all good, you know. This is the life you live. It's the home life. Okay. So I'm just like I said, I'm just opening up the scene. Matching it up in the corners here. Okay, here we go. And then the sides. Okay. It should fit pretty well. If you have to make any adjustments, this is the time to find out. Okay, if your lining is a little big or if it's a little tight, and this is when you want to find out. So what I do is I'm just kind of just checking to make sure that my um, that my lining is fitting everything right. So I'll also just kind of clip, add some clips to the front and back just to make sure. Okay. And it looks like it looks like everything is fitting the way it should. Like I said, don't think that this this flap is going to be too 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 heavy because we don't have any stabilizer in yet. So that's why it looks like it's flopping over. Once we get the stabilizer in, it will be just fine. Okay. So like I said, I'm just making sure that everything fits just right, okay? Alrighty, that looks good. I'm so happy with that. Okay, so now, let me take these clips off the front. I'm gonna go ahead, like I said, I'm gonna top stitch right across the sides here. We're not doing the front and the back yet. Now this is, this one I am going to do from this side. So what I do is there's no stabilizer, so it's pretty flexible. So I'm just going to push my bag. Don't be afraid to get it all smushed, okay? And I'm going to go ahead, make sure everything is where it should be. Get those little ends tucked in. 
matching up good. And I'm right from that side seam, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to top stitch. Okay. Starting right in that seam there. Getting it in place right now, making sure the lining is not poking in toward the front. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay. All right, so now I'm ready to go. your face okay. just got to take your time okay. just making sure that nothing is sticking out did leave some tails here okay so we just did the uh you see how we just top stitched the side and then you see he caught the lining underneath so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to just do the other side and i'm going to uh, tie the ends off and then we're going to get ready to um insert our stabilizer and sew the front and the back and that will be it Okay, so we have both the sides on, and now we are ready to um, insert our stabilizer, okay, and get ready to sew this bad boy up. And if you're wondering about this here, um, it's not time to put that on just yet. But what I, what, what I should have mentioned is, if you did a magnetic snap, then you should have already put your other piece on so i do apologize for those of you doing um a magnetic snap but if you're using a turn lock or a flip lock like i'm using then we're going to do that after everything is put together so um starting from the back here i'm just going to start inserting my stabilizer so we'll just start feeding it in like that and I reached in under the lining and I just start pulling it down okay I find this is the easiest way to do it just push it down in place okay It should fit really well. You shouldn't have to trim anything. But in the case that you do, it's okay if you have to. So pull your side pop your side panels out of the way and make sure that your your stabilizer is sitting really good at the bottom. Okay, where you creased it. It should be under you, when you push your side panels in, they should it should fit over the top of your stabilizer, okay? And your stabilizer should not be peeking out of the top. It should be in there, nice and snug. That's why we put those creases in there. You can feel the creases, okay? This is looking here. 
Okay, yay. Let me see here. It's going to look so good. Okay, so now we have to put some, um, some glue. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, glue. I just gotta keep getting it where I want it. Make sure it's situated just right. And I'm going to get some glue. So what I've been doing is I got me a little paintbrush that I got from my daughter. <laughs> Because if you're using this can with this little paintbrush, then you, you ha it's not, it doesn't work for, as well. It's too small. And I don't like getting my hands all in there and then they get glue on them. So I, this longer paintbrush actually works better. So um, first I'm gonna glue the stabilizer to the lining. So I just get in there and I just start brushing some glue in and I get it on the back of the lining as well. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to start gluing my stabilizer onto my lining the best I can. And we'll do, I'm going to do the front and the back. And um, then I'll come back when it's time to start uh, attaching the handles and getting these last, uh, getting the front and the back stitch closed. So go ahead and start your gluing and we'll come back later. Okay, so you should have your stabilizer in and uh, glued in the best you can. Um, and now we're getting ready to um, mark where we're gonna put our handles. So she has this handle placement guide you're going to uh, place that on the, the fold here is the center. So mark your center and then um, you'll know where to place your handles. Okay, so I've already marked my placement. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll start in the back and I'm going to go ahead and place the first. So you should not have glued all the way up to the edge. You should have left some room, um, you know, to uh, put your handle in. So about three eighths of an inch, she says, insert your handle. Um, so if you need to mark it, you can. But um, so, and then I just place a clip on either side to hold it in place. Okay. And so I'll put the other one in. And I'm just placing the seam toward the back. I mean, toward the inside, rather. Okay, is that my mark right there? Mark. Okay, right there. Clip it down. Put it on right. Is that not bad, right? I think I put this one over a little too far over. So about right there. And remember, you got to make sure your flap, there's room to put your flap through. Your flap is going to fit through your handle like that. Okay. So make sure it looks even, pretty even on both sides. Okay. I think that's good. Okay, so let me push this back through. Okay, I have this clipped in place. And now I'm going to top stitch. I'm going to top stitch from the inside because now that the stabilizer's in, it's going to be too difficult to try to top stitch it from this side. So unless you have a cylinder arm machine. So fold your flap out of the way and this, this is going, it's perfectly doable, okay? And I'm going to just get over here, get my spot. Okay. And if you want to top stitch, I mean, if you want to back stitch, you can, um, but I'm not going to. Okay. And just 
carefully start stitching. Hope and pray it looks okay from the front. Okay, so let's take a look and make sure everything looks okay. Like that. And it looks good to me. Looks good to me. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull those threads to, to the back in a little bit. Okay, but first I just got some little thread there. I just wanna make sure I take care of. Okay, so if you want, you can put rivets here to secure your handles as well, okay? Which I might do, um, but I'm first I'm gonna go ahead and do the front handle. So I'll do it the same way. So I have my marks here. Okay, and I'll put the one in. Uh oh. <laughs> Wrong end. This end. My tubing has slid down just a tad bit. So let me slide it back in. Okay. So over here. Okay. And then on this side here. See my mark? There's my mark. Okay. There we go. And I'll clip that one. And I'll just make sure that they look even. And they are. Okay. So now I'm ready to go ahead and go ahead and top stitch across there. Okay, so again, I'm going to do it from this side. Make sure. Just take your time. Go. I said, I think I'm going to put 
a couple of rivets there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean up these threads and, um, and mark the placement for my um, for the other part of my uh, my closure, my flip lock, and then put the chain on and it's good to go. I think it's looking good. Okay, so I'll be back with the final showing of Janelle. Oh my gosh, look at this Janelle. She's looking so good. I got the handles on. Again, I still think I might put a couple of rivets, put some rivets on the handles, but I don't have to decide that just yet. But what I'm going to do is put my the rest of my lock on. So remember those creases we had in the handles? So we have the one across that uh, goes across the back here. The other one should match up with the edge of the front of the bag there. So I have it there and I'm just going to press the flap into my lock here to get a little indentation of where I wanna put the uh, lock. And so once I have my mark, I can see the indentation there. Then I will take this part here and I'm going to um, mark it out. And um, so I'll cut out the hole for my lock. I just wanted to show you that that's how I mark where I wanna put the other half. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out and install and then come back when everything should be uh, done. Um, so go ahead, if you're going to go ahead and put your lock on, do that now. And then let's show off our Janelle bags. Ta-da! The Janelle bag is done. Look at, I'm so happy with it. Oh my gosh. I love that. The red with this vinyl is just so hot. Oh my gosh. I got the lock on right. Let's open it up and pull the strap, the flat back, and you have this beautiful interior. Oh my goodness. And you could put so much in there. Okay, so let's just put the strap on. And you don't, I mean, you don't even need a strap if you just, oh, you want to be chic and carry it on your arm. You know, you could dress this up, you could dress it down, some jeans, and still you're going to look so chic and fly. So, do people still say fly? I don't know what they say. My girls would say, Mom, you ate that up. That's what they would say. You still say fly. Uh, you still say fly? Yeah. Oh, see, I'm still with it. All right. So, um, let's put this chain strap on. And I'm so glad I went with this gunmetal because I almost went with silver. But the gunmetal, no, it makes the black pop in the vinyl. So, ah, uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you uh, will make the Janelle bag by Kim Buzz because her designs are just so fabulous. And you're going to see so much more from her. Um, I want to thank her for allowing me to do the tutorial. Please, please um, subscribe if you haven't. Smash the like button. You know, I'm going to have a list of the materials and supplies I used for this video. And of course, a link to this fabulous pattern. So get out there, get the pattern, make your Janelle bag. Because people were going to say, you did not make that, but you did. All right. Thank you for watching Soulful Creations. Bye-bye.